At the base $6,000 price, the 2019 Mac Pro is a terrible value, packing minimal specs like an 8-core processor, 580x graphics, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a measly 256 gigs of storage. So the question is, why in the world would Apple sell this computer at that price? And who would pay up to $53,000 for it and why? But in this video, we're not only gonna answer those questions, but we'll also tell you seven specific things the Mac Pro offers that you can't find anywhere else. But before we get into that and what we wish Apple did differently, we wanna take a minute to show off some of the features that make it seriously impressive. First off, the design looks very unique and it's also very solid built out of mostly high-strength aluminum and stainless steel. The tower is smaller than expected, yet weighs over 40 pounds on our lower-end config. Not only does the lattice pattern on the front and back look really cool and does an okay job at grating cheese, it also allows for a massive amount of air to flow through the case while retaining its strength. Taking the case off is shockingly easy, and the internals look really clean. The various locking mechanisms are engineered incredibly well, making it easier and quicker to replace components than on basically any other computer. You literally won't find a cable on the inside because the Mac Pro doesn't use them. Every single connection, from powering the fans to the graphics cards, happens with metal contact connectors. And even with that, the Mac Pro scored an impressive 9 out of 10 repairability score from iFixit. The fans have a design that we haven't seen on any other machine, and it led to whisper quiet performance even when we pushed our Mac Pro to the max in our thermal performance video. It packs a beast of a motherboard, with 8 PCI Express card slots, 4 of them supporting full 16x speeds, as well as dual 10 gigabit ethernet. It supports up to 12 Thunderbolt 3 ports, 1.5 terabytes of RAM, and not only one, but two of the most powerful graphics cards ever made. The Mac Pro is basically the Lambo of computers. It's got the Lambo design, it's got Lambo performance, it's over-engineered like a Lambo, it's got a state-of-the-art cooling system like a Lambo, and it's also priced like a Lambo. And just like a Lambo is obviously not meant for regular people that need to get from point A to point B, the Mac Pro isn't meant for the average or maybe even above average computer user. There's a reason coffee shops don't use consumer-grade espresso machines that you can buy for $500. Sure, they can get the job done, but they're not going to perform as well, and they're not going to be anywhere near as reliable. Even a coffee stand run by a small business is going to be using a commercial-grade espresso machine that could cost up to $10,000 and beyond. And that's what a workstation computer like the Mac Pro is. It's a commercial-grade machine that gets things done as fast and reliably as possible and it doesn't come cheap. There are companies like studios that render movies like Frozen or Jumanji 2 that will literally spend millions of dollars every year just on paying their employees alone. So for any company that can utilize the power of the Mac Pro, it's actually not expensive. If buying a high-priced, reliable Mac Pro can help their employees save time by running their programs faster, they will actually save money in the long run through higher efficiency alone. Now you might be thinking, why not just buy a reliable Windows workstation instead of a rip-off Mac Pro, right? Well, we actually made a video where we compared the Mac Pro to six other Windows workstation brands, and surprisingly, the Mac Pro was actually a bit cheaper in most of the comparisons. And on top of that, there are seven specific things the Mac Pro offers that you can't get anywhere else, things that we think will sell a lot of Mac Pros. But first, let me give a huge shout out to Micro Center for making our Mac Pro content possible. Micro Center has 25 stores nationwide with an impressive variety of electronics. From gaming, VR, computer parts like processors, graphics, and everything else needed to build or upgrade a PC or Mac. Micro Center has been an Apple authorized dealer since 1980. They have a dedicated Apple department with highly trained Apple sales associates. Aside from the iPhone, Micro Center carries the full line of Apple products, and they have the largest selection of third-party products made for Mac and iPad. Come into a local Micro Center today and talk to one of their Apple experts to order the specific Mac Pro configuration that best suits your needs. Check the link in the description to find a location near you, or browse all of Micro Center's Apple products. Back to the Mac Pro, for those people or companies who use macOS-based apps and need the most performance they can get, the new Mac Pro is an answered prayer. Previously, the best performance they could get is an iMac with an 18-core processor, 256 gigs of RAM, 
in a limiting Vega 64X graphics card. The new Mac Pro raises the bar to what most people would call overkill, like supporting up to a massive 1.5 terabytes of RAM and up to a 28 core processor. Even the Mac Pro's mid-range 16 core processor now outperforms the best 18 core option in the iMac Pro. Yes, the iMac Pro is a better value at the base price, but if you spec them up, the Mac Pro actually gives you better performance at a lower price. Another thing that's exclusive to the Mac Pro is the Afterburner card, which boosts video editing performance when working with ProRes, which is the industry standard professional codec for editing video. We tested it out with our $13,000 Mac Pro, and during playback of 8K ProRes footage, we noticed that CPU usage went from around 70% down to 2%, meaning that the Afterburner card was taking care of the workload. We also saw improved render times in various tests, especially 8K ProRes. And of course, you can't get the Afterburner card on any other machine, and it won't work in an eGPU either. If you want to see a detailed review of the Afterburner card, use the link in the video description below. Another thing you can't get anywhere else is incredible amounts of expandability, while also getting great reliability with macOS, like getting up to 12 Thunderbolt 3 ports and dual 10 gigabit ethernet while still having extra PCI Express slots left over. Now some of you may disagree that macOS is more reliable than Windows, but last year, Rescue.com, a computer repair service, revealed data that shows off the number of repair calls they received per computer brand, and Apple scored the highest reliability score by far. And in 2015, IBM switched out 90,000 PCs to Macs, and they found that they had to call in for tech support around two times less than when they previously used PCs. And 73% of their employees said they wanted another Mac when it was time to upgrade. There's also the option of building a Hackintosh to get upgradability and macOS together, but companies won't do that since it's illegal. And for small businesses like ours, Hackintoshes are a pain in the reliability department. We actually used two of them a few years ago and spent way too much time troubleshooting instead of working, so we switched them out for genuine Macs. Another thing you can't get on any other branded system is an incredibly silent cooling system. From our testing, our mid-range Mac Pro model was the only computer we've ever tested that could run both a CPU stress test and a graphics stress test at the same time without the fans audibly kicking up at all. It's so quiet that it almost feels unnatural, and there are people who will pay for that. We also think Apple's $6,000 Pro Display XDR is going to sell a lot of Mac Pros, simply because it's a better deal than a lot of the other professional reference monitors out there, and it's packing a much higher 6K resolution. Apple's graphics cards are the only ones out there that have Thunderbolt 3 ports that are required to power the Pro Display XDR. So even if you were to somehow connect the display to a Windows Workstation PC, it would most likely be limited in one way or another, like only working at 4K resolution, or not supporting 10-bit color or HDR, defeating the purpose of the display. And finally, AMD built the most powerful single graphics card in the world, the Vega 2 Duo, exclusively for the Mac Pro, offering 64GB of HBM2 memory and 28.4 teraflops of performance compared to the more expensive Quadro RTX 8000, with 48 gigabytes of slower memory and 16.3 teraflops of performance. Technically, the Vega 2 Duo has two GPUs on one card, but with Infinity Fabric Link and Apple's Metal 2 framework, they work as a single GPU, similar to a RAID 0 hard drive doubling both the memory and the bandwidth. So basically, if you want this level of graphics and memory performance, you have to get a Mac, and it has to be the Mac Pro. Apple sent a 3D graphics studio, Lunar Animations, a new Mac Pro to test out for their work. And that's actually what they used to do 3D animation for the latest Jumanji movie. They said they loved the Mac Pro because the 32 gigs of memory in the graphics card allowed them to get over five times more frames per second during playback, which allowed them to review, change, and preview all of their work at quote, lightning speed, while avoiding the need to create proxy textures and models. And the best part is that they weren't using a $53,000 Mac Pro, like a lot of people are led to believe is the price of the Mac Pro. The model that they received was actually under $20,000. So in reality, if you're working with graphics, a 12 or 16 core with 192 gigs of RAM will honestly be enough just like what Lunar Animations received. 
And for programmers, photo editors, or Logic Pro users, the base 580X graphics will be perfectly fine. And if you're connecting to a NAS server like we do, the base 256 gigs of storage is enough for most. For example, our iMac Pro is still only using around 110 gigabytes of storage, but we still think Apple should have given us a one terabyte SSD as standard. Realistically, most high-end professional configurations will likely average around $15,000. Now that's not cheap, but far from the outcry about the $53,000 Mac Pro, in a decent value compared to other workstations. The biggest complaints we hear from PC enthusiasts is that the Mac Pro doesn't use PCI Express 4.0, and that the Xeon CPU's price to performance is much worse compared to the just released chips from AMD, and we completely agree with that. Now this really isn't Apple's fault, but Intel's, for not innovating while charging a ton of money. And while we wish Apple used those brand new AMD processors, this Mac Pro has been in the works for multiple years, so Apple would have had to delay the Mac Pro to switch to using AMD processors. But for the future, we seriously hope Apple will make the switch. Now the low-end $6,000 model is honestly a horrible value unless you plan on upgrading it yourself, but there's a reason for that price. Adjusting for inflation, Apple's high-end desktops have always started at around $3,000, but this year, it starts at double the price, with specs that seem a bit underwhelming, but there's actually a sensible reason for it. Let me explain. The previous Mac Pros ran into various limitations, like the 2012 model not having enough PCI Express slots, or having a power supply so weak that it forced users to rig up external power supplies to run multiple graphics cards. The 2013 trash can Mac Pro also ran into major thermal limitations, not being able to keep the graphics cards cool. But this time around, Apple made sure that every Mac Pro comes equipped to properly sustain a maxed out system, featuring a massive 1400 watt power supply, which is utterly overkill for the base model. Every Mac Pro also packs a top of the line motherboard with tons of room for upgradability and a cooling system that's built to be able to properly cool a 28 core, four GPU system while staying quiet. Yes, the Mac Pro is expensive, but it gives you a lot of options, both now and later. If you're a small business owner who wants to get the most value, you can buy the base model, upgrade it yourself, and save thousands of dollars. While at the same time, big corporations can configure the Mac Pro how they want it right out of the gate. But in terms of upgradability, it's incredibly quick and easy, like we showed in our Everything You Can Upgrade on the Mac Pro video. We were able to easily add in our own M.2 SSD, save over $2,000 on 192 gigs of RAM, add in our own graphics cards, and we even removed the socketed CPU and found better value options you can upgrade to. A part of that high base price is Apple trying to get a little extra profit since they are losing money by allowing you to upgrade everything yourself. But even then, it's not that high once you consider market value prices for all the parts. A similar motherboard packing close to the same features would cost $2,000 alone. The Mac Pro's custom built and extremely solid case is comparable to cases priced close to $1,000, and those are still cheaper and easier to manufacture than the Mac Pro's. That's close to $3,000 already, without mentioning any of the performance or silent cooling components, and then adding in the rest of the base parts gets the total price up to about $5,000, so the Apple tax isn't really as bad as people think. Whether you're buying a base model and upgrading it yourself, or buying an already specced up model from Apple, the beauty of the Mac Pro is that you're getting a combination of three different things. High performance right now, upgradability for years down the road, and reliable macOS software to keep your work running efficiently. And based on the feedback from businesses with a high budget and workloads demanding enough to warrant such powerful machines, along with the fact that both the Mac Pro and XDR display are back-ordered between three weeks to two months, we would say that the new Mac Pro is a big success for Apple. If you enjoy this review, make sure to check out some of our other Mac Pro videos right over there and click that circle above to subscribe for some videos on the Pro Display XDR coming soon. Once again, we'd like to thank Micro Center for helping make this review possible. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.